Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I am looking at X-Plane Starship. This is a spin-off of the X-Plane games, uh, developed by Austin Meyer himself. That's the guy that founded Laminar Research. He's always been a bit of a space fan, and he's decided to create a game or a simulation of the Starship using the X-Plane engine. Uh, it simulates the flaps, uh, it simulates the thrust vectoring, and I'm trying to fly this. Now, it's available for free on iPad and iPhone, and the main control system is adjusting the device so it's using the gyroscopes and the accelerometers to actually give you a control system. Uh, there we go. I think we're... Oh, no, 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 no. This is very... <laughs> it's so hard to do this at the same time as talking. Oh, man, and I'm ruining some people's Teslas. It's not the first time I've tried to land a rocket in a parking lot, though. Yep, that'll do. Practically a carbon copy of the previous flights, with the exception of having a nose cone. So the second scenario they have available is the 15 kilometer hop with the belly flop and landing. So this is uh, a much better example of the simulation of the aerodynamics. So, yeah, initially you're just flying vertically, picking up enough velocity. The, it's based on the X-Plane engine, so of course you have cockpit views, you have uh, different camera views. Yes, you can fly past, and you see those green lines. Those are supposed to show the, the forces acting on those flaps. Now, I'm trying to get up to 15 kilometers, so at some point I'm going to cut the thrust. And that is Austin himself offering some advice to pilots out there. I did actually manage to overcook this a little, passing through 15 kilometers now, uh, and I'm still going upwards at Mach 1, so I'm probably going to top out at about 20 kilometers. And uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm trying to not, I'm trying to keep this thing straight, but it's apparently deciding to do a backflip. I'd love to say that this backflip is intentional. It certainly looks stylish, makes me look like a pro Starship pilot, but the real one shouldn't be doing that. It should be doing something a little more careful. Actually, at least I'm coming around. Okay, I'm in some sort of controllable position as I'm beginning to descend downward. So now I am in the Starship. Uh, we call this the belly flop maneuver. So Starship, as you probably have heard, it does this belly flop maneuver where it presents the wide and the side angle of the spacecraft flat on. According to Elon, it will be a 70 degree angle of attack, which is ridiculously high. But the reason it's doing this is it's trying to present as much um, cross section as possible to decelerate as fast as possible. And it will maintain this by using the flaps to adjust the orientation. Once it slows down to subsonic velocities, it should be, you know, around 10,000 feet and then falling vertically towards the ground. Now, from here, it can still get some sort of cross range to try to aim for the target. Again, you'll see the force vectors here as I'm trying to control myself. You see, this is the simulation showing how it's doing, uh, you know, lift versus drag uh, forces. So there is the target there. Uh, they actually have it sitting, it doesn't sit next to the coast here, I'm guessing because water rendering isn't in this, or I, I don't know, it was a bit of terrain they had. Regardless, it's pretty close to sea level, so I'm just going to try and very gently point this towards the target. I think I'm pretty far off target here, so I'm di moving the nose forwards, hoping to glide a little towards the target here. Come on... I don't know what kind of cross-range Starship we'll actually have in this situation. Um, not as much as a space shuttle did, probably more than what Dragon does, because this has to do some pretty precise landing. There we go. Just, I'm not using the cold gas thrusters you hear, but I'll fire those up once I start firing the main engine. So this is about five kilometers up, 15,000 feet. Just... Yeah, it's still uh, moving, um, yeah, moving actually, well, 300 meters per second horizontal. That's pretty good. That, oh, maybe, is that 300 kilometers per hour? I don't know. I certainly seem to be moving cross range quickly enough. And uh, I'm keeping the landing site relatively close. When am I going to light these engines? I'm waiting for Austin to tell me. I trust Austin. He's a, he's a space nerd, the right kind of nerd. Come on. 
I, I'm so surprised that I'm able to keep this pointed the right way. There we go! Okay, so I'm right lighting Raptor's landing mode. So landing mode automatically throttles. Oh, uh, wait, I'm twisting. Twisting. No, 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 no. No, get it straight, get it straight. Uh, yes, there we go. Nice! Oh, wow, I cannot believe how accurately this is on target. This is looking really good, and it's a complete fluke. Like, it's not like skill. Oh, I'm <laughs> blowing the Teslas away. The power of the Raptor pushing the Teslas around, and that is no small feat given the mass of a Tesla. Okay. Oh, there we go, okay. Well, didn't quite get it on the landing pad, but I'll take that. I mean, sorry, cars. Hey. Oh, wow. That is uh, that is quite a maneuver there. And of course, we're expecting the real thing to happen sometime in December. So those are the two Earth-based scenarios. But uh, long-time users of X-Plane will know that it was one of the first flight simulators to add Mars as an option. It might be the only flight simulator. But uh, yeah, there are three Mars scenarios. You can just do a landing. You can do a, a hyperbolic re-entry and landing. And then you can launch to orbit. So yeah, does it work? Well, sort of. <laughs> So unlike the Earth, there isn't really enough atmosphere on Mars for Starship to slow down to subsonic speeds and then fall like a skydiver. Instead, it's performing this, you know, supersonic, or it starts out hypersonic, transitioning to supersonic re-entry. And at some point, it runs out of altitude and it has to start using the rocket engines to slow down enough so that it can actually land. At least that's how it's represented in this simulation. So at this point, my speed is the equivalent of about Mach 2 on Earth, but of course the speed of sound in Mars is different, and there's only 1.7% of the atmosphere on Mars. I'm very low down here. Um, so yeah, just trying to keep a positive angle of attack here so that we're gaining some lift. Try you want to maintain your altitude as much as possible. And I'm just steering this by holding the iPad and twisting it, and you can see the control surfaces responding uh, through the forces. It's very cool that they've built this control system. Now, there is an autopilot here that's helping me a lot. And so now, yeah, here it is. So I'm gonna flip my butt around and now start slowing down. Notice we have three Raptors getting to work here. But if you look at the control uh, set, you know, the control indicator in the middle, you'll see the throttle is automatically changing. So there's two buttons. There's basically 100% thrust and then there's autopilot controlled thrust, that's Raptor landing mode, and it will adjust the throttle, although it seems to be adjusting throttle down to about 25%, which is, I think is a bit a bit lower than what Elon thinks is possible for this, but yeah, thanks to the power of the autopilot, I may have performed... <laughs> yeah, I, I could not have done this without the autopilot. Bingo! Nice! On the Martian surface and not falling over... Oh, wait. Come on. Get vertical. Get vertical. You know you wanna. Uh, yes, yes, it's actually working. Oh, hallelujah. You see, the gods come through for me. I'm gonna be clear. I don't think I could have done that without the flight assist. Uh, you know, what are you gonna do? It's very hard to control because it's it's waving a your tablet or a phone around. But it it is free, so I'm quite happy to have it. And of course, the reason it's free is because Austin sort of did this as a side project while the rest of Laminar Research are working on X-Plane. And so he actually has introduction videos to all the missions where he sits with or stands with his whiteboard and holds up models. Uh, you know, he's obviously a massive space fan, and I'm super happy that he's done this. And so the most complex scenario they have here is Mars EDL with a hyperbolic orbit. So you're basically start headed into Martian atmosphere. You're moving at more than twice escape velocity. So if you don't slow down, you will skip off into space and possibly not come back to Mars. On the other hand, if you end up skimming too low inside the atmosphere, you might end up running out of altitude before you can shed all your speed. So this is actually quite a, a fun thing to try to balance and try and find the, the correct approach. I've had a lot of fun trying to do this, but I can't show you a complete playthrough because it doesn't work right now. Uh, so when, it, when I first downloaded it, it worked fine and he's 
been very receptive to the community. He's been making a bunch of fixes, and it looks like the current build just this level isn't executing particularly well on my iPad. Regardless, you know, it's a free application developed by someone who's obviously a big fan of the idea. I love the fact that it is using the X-Plane engine, it is simulating everything accurately, and it does include all sorts of regions of Mars. This is great. It's free. You should check it out if you've got an iPad or an iPhone and try flying some Starship. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.